Hey there, this is Owen with Grimspeed and today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough and installation for the new Grimspeed version 2 turbo inlet for the 2015 to 21 WRX. So before we get started on the install here, I just kind of wanted to give you a walkthrough of what's changed between the version 1 and version 2 of our turbo inlets. Here you can see, here's the version 1, it's got the fittings built in there and then the version 2 actually has these threaded bosses for fittings that we include. There is now just one model comes with fittings for both 15, 16 and then the 17 plus. Now if you look close at them you'll also see that the machining and the casting on this is a little bit nicer than the old ones. Not that these are bad. And then inside they are nearly identical. So you're not going to see any performance difference. If you already have the version 1 there's no need to upgrade. Now behind me here on the lift I have a 2018 WRX. So I'm going to be doing the configuration for the 17 plus. But if you have a 15 or 16 model of your car it's pretty much the same underneath for the installation. So I'll I'll explain the differences as we go. And we're over here on the bench just so I can give you a better idea of what the differences are. You can see a little better. So here's the version one. You can see the ports are kind of milled in on there versus here. We just have the threads. So there are these fittings that go in. This smaller fitting goes up top and then you have either the 15 and 16 PCV plug or the 17 to 21 PCV plug and those will go into the larger thread here. All right, so now that I've got those out of the bag, you can see all three of these fittings have a little O-ring that goes with them. That's just to help seal against here. So that O-ring will just go over the threads like so. Just like that, you can see. And it's gonna be the same with all of them. That'll just bottom out on the bottom there. And then you can just thread that right in like that. And we'll use an actual wrench to tighten that up all the way. But the O-ring does seal pretty well, so they don't need to be crazy tight. Now, you have the two different ports here I was talking about. We have the 15 and 16 port right here, and then also the 17 to 21. You can see this one's got a barb because it's just a hose that goes over it with a hose clamp. Versus this one, it slips over and then kind of plugs in down here. And I'll get more into that in a second here. But I'm going to get this set up for a 17 to 21 car. So I get the O-ring put over this and then get that threaded on. Just like so. So we're looking good. And you'll notice we have a few little bolts. I'm just gonna set that other bong aside. A few little bolts here. These two larger ones are gonna be for this hole and this hole. Those are gonna be for your boost control solenoid. And then this little baby screw along with this tab will go right in here, kind of oriented like that. This tab is only for the 17 to 21 models. This is not for the 15, 16. So if you have a 15 or 16 model of your car, you can just throw this away, give it to a buddy, feed it to your dog, I don't care. But we are not gonna attach this quite yet. So keep track of this small screw. You can put it back in the baggie and keep track of it. But this is all you need to do to get it prepared to go into the car. Once again, if you have a 15, 16, just swap out this port for this one and you'll be good to go. All right, so now that we've got the inlet all ready to go in the car, I'm gonna get the car up in the air and start showing you what you need to take off in order to swap this out with your factory inlet. So now that we're underneath the car, I'm gonna start by removing the plastic under tray as well as this aluminum skid tray here, just so we can get better access to the turbo and turbo inlet area. So now that we have the skid trays off, you can see we have a lot better access to everything. We got our turbo, we got our intake piping, and then we can also see our stock plastic turbo inlet here in the middle. That's what we're gonna be removing. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get this lower intake pipe pulled off. That's just two worm clamps here, get it pulled off the inlet and pulled out of the car. And then we'll get into everything else that's going on here in a second. All right, so now that we have the intake off of the inlet, we can start removing hoses. We're gonna start with this big white PCV plug. Now this is the big differentiator between the 17 to 21 and the 15 to 16 models. 15 to 16, you don't have any of this. It's just a hose coming down from the top with a little clamp on it. You would just undo that clamp, unplug the hose, and you're good to go. With 17 to 21, it's a little bit tricky and this can get a little bit stuck, but it's as simple as pressing on this tab here on the bottom of the gray plug and then wiggling this upper part loose and it'll just pop off just like that. And then right next to that, we have the wiring for that plug. Now, once that's disconnected, we have the gray connector on the tab and we can just pop that up and off just like that and tuck it off to the side. Now, right next to that, we have this other hose that's just gonna pop right off in the same way, just like that. So now that we have all that apart, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna loosen up this clamp here that connects the bypass valve to the lower part of the charge pipe. That way we can get everything disassembled here in one go. Now you don't need to take that clamp all the way off, just loose enough that it kind of spins around and it's not holding anything in place. So now we're almost ready to get the factory inlet off. We just need to remove 
this 10 millimeter bolt and there's another one around on the other side. So you're gonna wanna get an extension and come in from over here to get that. All right, so now that you have those two bolts removed, the one last thing you need to do is just remove the line from your boost control solenoid. That's this one right here. It should just pop out like that. And then all you need to do is just pull the bypass valve out of the charge pipe and then it should all come off as one unit. So we have it all hanging here. What we're gonna need to disconnect now is we unplug our electronic boost control solenoid. Let's just press on the gray tab and unplug it like that. And then we just have our reference line for the bypass valve that we're gonna unplug. So let's just pop it right out. And there we have the factory inlet and bypass valve. All right, so now we have the factory inlet over here on the bench and we're just gonna get everything transferred over from this. We're gonna transfer over the bypass valve as well as the boost control solenoid. So we'll start off with the bypass valve here, just getting it off. You just gotta take this little pinch clamp, pair of pliers, pinch it and slide it all the way down to the base and then your bypass valve. You can just twist it and it'll pop right out like that. Then we just need to remove our boost control solenoid. That's just these two Phillips screws. And then the boost control solenoid will just pop right out. You wanna double check this O-ring on here, make sure that that's still in good shape, get any dirt off of it. Okay, so now that we have the bypass valve and the electronic boost control solenoid removed from the factory inlet, we can go ahead and get them attached here. We're gonna start with the boost control solenoid. It'll pop in same as it was in the factory setup, just like that. And then we'll use those two four millimeter headed Allen bolts to attach it. We can just get them started by hand here. For the bypass valve here, you're gonna take your included silicone coupler and pop it onto this fitting right here and then grab both of the clamps that we include and put those over top. Usually I like to have those aligned so that the screws can be easily accessible from this way. So the screws just like that. Then we can grab our bypass valve and remember to have the circle facing the same way as the rest of the inlet. And just pop that into the coupler like so. And then we'll leave these screws loose for now just so we can make sure it's perfectly aligned and we'll get that in the car. All right, so now back on the car, we're gonna take that little metal tab that we include we're gonna grab the gray PCB plug and we're gonna go on the back of it here and slide it up from the cable side, just like this until it latches in place. And there we go. You can see there's that little lip in there that just kind of pops into that hole, just like that. Now we can come in with the whole inlet assembly. We just pop it in place. We're gonna start up here with the bypass valve and just get that slotted into the charge plate. Once that bypass valve is in place, we can go ahead and reconnect that reference hose up top just so we don't forget about it. Make sure that's good and bottomed out so it's nice and snug. Now we're gonna grab our screwdriver and we're gonna tighten up these clamps for the bypass valve recirc as well. Make sure that your flange down here on the turbo is pretty well aligned and just make sure it's flat there. So now we have that all in place. You can see it's still a little loose. Leave this coupler into the charge pipe. Loose for now, we'll get that tightened up in a second. So next we're gonna take the two 10 millimeter bolts that attach the inlet to the turbo and we're gonna run those in. I recommend just getting one started, not going all the way in. Then grab your other one and come around to the other side and get it started. Once you have both of those bolts started, you can go ahead and tighten them all the way. So as you can see there, we do have both of these bolts fully tightened down now. The inlet is firmly attached. Now that we have that all secure and all locked in place, we can tighten up this clamp that attaches the bypass valve to the charge pipe. While we're in here, we can also attach our hose for our electronic boost control solenoid. Just plug that in like so. Now we can go ahead and get that white PCV connection hooked back up to the inlet. Just pop the connector over the black fitting as shown here and then plug the gray PCV connector back in until you hear it click. With that connector in place, we can now take the included 2.5 millimeter Allen screw and secure the retaining tab to the turbo inlet. Finally, hook up the EVAP purge line to the remaining port on the inlet. Once that's hooked up, reinstall your intake piping and under trays and you're good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our team of experts at support at grimspeed.com.